So when you're adding code and pick code, you're not typing it out line by line. You're like kind of guided through the process of editing the code. So you're going to click this plus button. In here, you now get a selection of every possible coding statement that you can add. So uh, Charlie, um, I'm really interested in what you're building um, because it combines um, two of my favorite subjects, which are uh, low code and um, education. Um, I'm really curious to hear about um, yeah, how you got the idea to start uh, building what you're working on. Yeah, for sure. Well, so thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so I started working on PIC code a few years ago. Um, I, out of college, I worked as a software engineer for a few years. Um, and then like COVID happened, everything kind of got like turned around uh, and I like pivoted career uh, to um, education. So I, I actually got a master's in education and I was working, uh, I worked for a few years in high school. Um, and so like kind of uh, just a couple months into teaching at the high school, we were using a few tools for teaching, like kind of intro coding tools out there um, that I was like not particularly satisfied with. So um, mm -hmm. that's where the idea for Pick Code came was like, it started as just kind of a side project of like, I wanna see if I can do something make a tool that is like a better way to introduce people to you know kids to coding um, <clears throat> and so you know gradually over the last few years it's it's turned into more of a business and now this is like my full-time thing um yeah. that's really cool so was this like a public high school or a private high school yeah i was at a, a public school um and so i taught like a single intro to coding course um i had like multiple sections of it I around 25 kids a class um and it was like a mix of kind of ninth graders to 12th graders, um, mostly ninth graders. And so uh, the tools that we would use would be like kind of intended for a younger audience. So like the block coding type stuff that you may have yeah. seen online. Um, Scratch. Stuff similar to Scratch. It was, uh -huh. yeah, there's a, a bunch of them, but um, yeah, that kind of that kind of idea. And did you feel like the students, like the ninth graders, were they kind of um, getting frustrated or just impatient with the the limited tools that they had, or what was kind of the the challenges for them for those students? Yeah, I think there's a few things. So, like, if you're getting started learning to code, I feel like you want to feel like you're coding. So, like, absolutely no like hate on block coding. I think it's like an awesome mm -hmm. tool. But yeah. if you ask a kid who's doing block coding, like are you coding? They're going to be like, I don't know. This is like kind of fun. We're dragging stuff around. It's like Legos. Like, I'm not so sure. Um, mm -hmm. So like one of the goals with pick code from the beginning is that if you're sitting down and doing it, you should feel like you're coding. Um, and there should be a very clear connection between what you're doing on pick code and like what you would advance to later in terms of doing Python or JavaScript or, you know, some other more advanced language. Right. That makes a lot of sense for me because I remember some of my big kind of breakthrough moments when I was first learning to code is when you start thinking in more abstract levels. So like start thinking about functions or even classes and these kind of things. And with a block language, you're just limited. Um, I mean, it's a great way to start, but you're just limited in the kind of abstractions you can make. Yeah. From like a coding perspective, there are challenges in terms of like how advanced you can get. Uh, there are some like block platforms that actually do a pretty good job with that. But I think another thing that's pretty important is like, what can you do with what you're coding? Like, what is the output? Like, what are you making? Um, and mm -hmm. so like, you know, I think a lot of the block coding platforms, like you end up doing some sort of specialized task. So scratches around like animations and games and like, that's the model and that's what you're doing. Um, so like another one of the goals of pick code is to have it so that there's like a variety of different things that you can create and sort mm -hmm. of like recognize that the same coding concepts apply to the different things that you can make, but also just like what you're making in itself is interesting and something that you'd be like proud of sharing um, and excited about. And so um, when we decided to do like chatbots and like visual graphics and games to start, like that's very intentional as like, what can we do that is easy to program, but like quickly gets you doing something that's like actually exciting? Yeah, I feel that. And I saw that you're actually uh, supporting both pick code and Python in your editor, is that right? Yeah, so that's something we added on um, in the past year or so, like just around this time last year, we kind of started that project. And so 
that's another piece, right? Is like you want to be able to transition um, to like what is that next step for you? So one of the things for pick code is like we want to make it very clear that it's preparing you for something else. Like we, you know, there's only so much you can do in a visual like programming language, and like we're I'm not trying to say that someone's gonna sit there mm -hmm. and use pick code for the rest of their life. Like it's it's kind of a way to get started and get introduced, and it should be fun. Um, but then, yeah, having Python on the side, I think, is is awesome. And we do see um, users go through and do some pick code lessons and also try some Python stuff. And like that's something that we're going to try and hopefully get to is like people completing a bunch of lessons and courses in in pick code. We call it pick code language because like and it's kind of confusing right together. Mm -hmm. Pick code yes. side and pick code language. Okay. But uh, we want people can, can you know completing lessons in pick code language and then feeling like they have the confidence to go and like tackle Python and like have it be familiar enough that like, okay, I'm doing variables, I'm doing, I'm calling functions, I've got if statements, and like I learned that in pick code language, mm -hmm. I'm learning it in Python, it's the same concepts, and like having that connection be very clear. Uh, whereas like, yes, it's yeah. true that you can kind of make that connection with block coding, but it's a much bigger jump. And so we're kind of trying yeah. to fill that gap there. Yeah. Bridging the gap between visual coding and then what I guess a lot of people will call real programming. Yeah, uh, it's like a huge, huge change between those two models, right? Um, yeah. And so that's where I was, again, kind of mentioning, like, if you're a person sitting down and using block coding or pick code or Python, like, what is the feeling that you have? And like, if, if you've been doing block coding this whole time, but don't really feel like it's coding, like, maybe Python's going to be super intimidating. So Mm -hmm. One thing we're trying to do, right, is lower that barrier to entry to doing something that really feels like you're writing line by line code, and um, that way you can advance like with confidence and, and feel like you're going to stick around and, and keep learning. Cool. Um, well, um, I'd ask you to uh, show us something. So yeah, it'd be really cool to um, to see a demo of pick code and see how it works. Cool. Yeah. So we're here. We're in the pick code editor, um, and so. You know, uh, when you show up on the real site, we kind of have a fancy onboarding tour, but I can do it with my mouse here. So on the left side, you get the code editor. On the right hand side, um, you've got like where you're going to run your code. Uh, this project is set up to make a chat bot. So when we press play on the code, you get this like kind of chat window. Um, so like this is in contrast to like a regular Python project where you're going to get like this black and white console of just like a bunch of text, like. You know, we'll we'll see chat bubbles and things show up over here. Sure. So when you want to add some code, you just press uh, green plus sign, and in here you now get a uh, selection of every possible kind of coding statement that you can add. So we're gonna just try and make a really simple program here to like welcome a user and ask for their name and like show their name back on the screen. So we can do that. We can say we we want to call something. And then every time you're editing code in pick code, you're always presented, like that's why it's called pick code. Like you're always selecting from drop downs and options as to like what's valid code to add here. Um, so you're not remembering a bunch of keywords and function names. You're you're always selecting what's what's possible. So if I want to do something with the chat bot, I can say I want to do chat. I want to send a message. And then again, this is kind of a like the programming keyboard. Um, like a little mini keyboard in line here. So here are all the different kind of symbols and things you might be able to add into your program. So if we want to add some text, we can press this button and I can say, uh, what's up? Right. So we do that. We have our line of code here. And if we zoom back out and go over here, we press play and we'll see, you know, there's like a little typing animation and it says, what's up? Uh, we can add a variable for like storing a user's name. Uh, so I can say person's name over here. I can now um, select that I want to ask a question with the chat bot. And I can have a prompt, what's your name? And here, if we want to um, kind of respond with their name, we can send another chat message by doing call, chat, send, and then we can add uh, some text. Nice to meet you. And then we can incorporate that uh, response from them, what their name was, by doing kind of plus sign. And then we can select a variable 
and we can select person's name. So like the key thing is that, okay, I made this variable for the person's name and like now that's available in this dropdown. Um, and mm -hmm. these things are tied together. So like if I decide to rename this, it's renaming the variable live like everywhere where I used it. So we're really trying to like eliminate as many possible errors as we can um, and like make that process more guided. So that's really cool. That's, that's really yeah. cool. I actually wish normal editors did that. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, small, small question. So like on your website, I know you have a lot of tutorials which walk, walk people step by step um, through, you know, what are what each of these symbols mean. Um, is that the, the best way to learn? Or do you also have like a reference where someone can go look up what um, what one of these symbols stands for? Yeah, so we do have like a, a kind of reference section. I can also show um, mm -hmm. Here's an example of one of our um, like guided lessons. So um, previously, we were kind of looking at what it would look like if you're just kind of freeform making a project. This is one of our guided lessons. We don't need to sit here and read all the instructions, but basically, we take some of the room on the screen to give you these lessons in app. Um, and it gives you all the instructions that you need. Uh, it's got pictures of the different buttons you need to press. Um, we have kind of inline videos that show different um, like key steps in the process. We've got code snippets. Um, and so we have a ton of these lessons on the site. Um, and that's kind of the main way that I think you'd get started um, mm -hmm. on pick code is you would like, you can buy yourself, like you don't need a teacher, you don't need anybody. Um, yeah, kind of get on here and get started. And like, we'll guide you through getting from like the very basics. So the program that we looked at is like, you know, not rocket science. And that's probably like lesson two. Uh, by lesson 30, you can make games, you can make um, all sorts of different stuff, and you can start layering in some actually pretty advanced coding concepts. Cool. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Was there something? No, no, more? you're good. Um, so yeah, we just want to, we can see that this demo works. Uh, it says, what's up? What's your name? Charlie. Nice to meet you, Charlie. So, you know, you can do this same project in Python, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you've done any sort of intro to programming, like, You've done. You've made a program like this. The question is just like, how easy was it to get started? What happened when there were errors? And then like, if you finished the Python version of this lesson versus the PIC code version of this lesson, um, like which one are you more likely to be interested in sharing? Um, so like, we also have this sort of like full screen mode, right, where you can hide the code, you can share share a link to this page, and it's just the output of your program. So you make this chatbot, you can send it to your friends. Um, and like that's something that's really not possible to do with a lot of these other platforms. So if I build something during a lesson, can I share that with my friends already? Yep, uh, we have kind of Google Doc style, like share with anyone cool. in the world with a link. Um, you can copy that link, send it to people. Um, and that ends up being pretty fun. And I think that's a unique feature for us. Um, so oftentimes really difficult to share um, stuff. That being yeah. said, I think that's one of the things that Scratch, the block coding platform, does really well, um, is that they have this whole community um, of like, you know, they've mm -hmm. got tons of users and, and they're always generating different projects and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something we want to get to as we grow the user base, um, is really like be able to show off what are people in the, in the community making, um, for sure. Yeah, when I look at the code, it looks a lot like JavaScript um, with a few changes. Um, did you base it off of uh, JavaScript? Um, and if so, like what were the things that you really thought we have to change to make it approachable for beginners? Yeah, so I mean, good good catch. Like it, it's basically JavaScript. Um, mm -hmm. We made some key key changes to like make it easier to kind of comprehend and understand what's going on. Um, so you'll notice that like every line of code starts with a keyword and it's like all color coded. Similar to like the syntax highlighting you would get in a real code editor, but yeah, not real. <laughs> in, a, in a, you know, in VS yeah. Code or something like that. Um, similar idea, but like we always want every line of code to be very readable, so you can like start with the keyword and then say what is it that I'm doing on that line. Um, and the other thing is just kind of like removing as much like specialized punctuation uh, as you can. Um, so in JavaScript, you've got all these curly braces and parentheses and different stuff um, hmm. because, you know, we have this visual builder and like yeah. 
you're always adding code with like the plus buttons and stuff like that, and it's very structured, we can get rid of a lot of um, we can get rid of a lot of the punctuation and different symbols that you need uh, and kind of simplify simplify a bit. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I'm kind of wondering if in the future maybe some of these uh, features that you have could make it into um, editors that advanced programmers use as well. Yeah, so like I think I showed off the kind of like automatic renaming of variables and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. It depends on the use case. I mean, a lot of people have experimented with these sorts of structured yeah. editors. Like, you know, I won't pretend that pick code is like the only one out there, but, um, you know, we've tried to select like this, the features that make most sense for kind of like absolute beginners. Um, that being said, like we would love this to be something as we extend the amount of projects you can make. Um, like one of the like long-term roadmap features for us is like, can this be a low code tool for like professionals or for people who are trying to prototype an app or something like that. Right. Um, I think, you know, we've got our work cut out for us in terms of getting there, but um, certainly something that we're interested in aiming towards. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, that was, that was most of the questions I have. Um, I guess one final question would be just like, what do you think the, the future of learning to code will be like? So I have a blog and I've like written I basically write this post over and over again, just like different takes on it. It's like, how can we, um, how can we like change the the learning to code kind of landscape to be more friendly and and um, you know, obviously taking into account like advancements like all the AI stuff out there. Um, I think it's like still going to be important always to know the fundamentals of programming. Um, and it's also fun. Like, I think that's something that gets lost is that like, yeah. oh, programming is just this thing where you sit down and like you bang your head against the wall. And like, that's not what it's about. Like, it's actually like most people who have like gotten mm -hmm. their way through learning the basics of coding should tell you that it's like actually like a fun thing to do. Uh, and so that's something that we're always trying to figure out is like, how can we, we're always focused on trying to make sure that whatever experience we're delivering is something we're like, you can make stuff you're excited about. You can have fun with it. Um, so, like, whatever the future of learning to code is or, or learning, like, I think focusing on that aspect is is the most important. Um, like, if people are having fun with it and, and tr like intrinsically motivated to keep going, like, the rest of it kind of falls out. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, I think that's like a really important thing to consider. Um, so, like, do you want an AI to automate absolutely every aspect of coding, mm -hmm. like? I don't know, like maybe it's more efficient, but like it doesn't sound as fun to me. Um, so like that's that's kind of one of the things that we're trying to to aim for. I love that. There's definitely a lot of a lot of fun in learning to code and in learning to solve problems. Yeah, yeah. And I think like, you know, there is a certain degree of like with current tools, like there's a decent amount of banging your head against the wall and like getting error messages that are too confusing and like there are like a lot of usability issues in there, but like I think they're pretty solvable. Um, and so like I don't want to be satisfied with like the status quo of how it works today. Like I think um, between pick code and like there's plenty of other people trying this stuff out as well. Um, like we can we can drastically improve that um, user experience and like AI will help with that. But like it, I don't think you can just be like oh add a chat mm -hmm. GPT chatbot to your learn to code website. And like, you know, mm -hmm. we're all set. Like there are so many more things that can be done um, to like improve, improve how people's experience goes. Definitely, definitely. Cool, well, uh, yeah, that's all I had. Thank you so much for taking the time. For sure, yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting.